Hey everyone, welcome to an episode by Renewable Innovations. Uh, my name is Dale and I'm your trusted real life research analyst YouTuber. And today we're diving into the ever evolving world of electric SUVs. And we've got a powerhouse lineup for you in this video. And if you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to the channel by using the link down in the description below. Um, the all new Lucid Gravity is part of this, the, Lu the Tesla's tried and true Model X, the elegant Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 SUV, the sleek BMW iX, I do like the origami styling, and Audi's futuristic Q6 e-tron, which is on a new EV driving train. Oh, and let's not forget the massive Cadillac Escalade iQ. Whether you're looking for range, speed, size, or style, there's something here for everyone. Now keep in mind, these are the high-end cars and we will be doing more videos on other types of vehicles in the space. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video and share it with your friends too. I really appreciate it. So let's start with what matters most to many EV shoppers, range. Uh, the Lucid Gravity is expected to deliver up to 440 miles per charge, which is a huge deal for long distance drivers. It's, it's only outdone by Cadillac Escalade IQ boosting, I should say boasting, boasting, and it's such a weird word, a massive 450 miles of range. Thanks to its equally massive battery. It is really a ridiculous sized battery and we're going to get into that. Now, Tesla's Model X holds its own with up to 348 miles. The BMW iX comes in at around 324. And Audi's Q6 e-tron estimates about 300 miles of range. And let's not forget Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 clocks in at 285, one of the lower ones in the group. So if range is your type priority, Lucid and Calac are probably your front runners, depending on your price and budget. And we're gonna get into that, so keep listening and watching. Now, how do they pull that off? Well, let's talk battery sizes. The Escalade IQ leads the class with a jaw-dropping 200 kilowatt hour battery. I mean, it's, it's insane. You, you can't even put that many batteries on your house per the electrical code, but you can drive around with that many in your car. It's, it's pretty massive. That, and it, yeah, it's just, it's just a really big rig of EV batteries at the end of the day. And then the Lucid Gravity offers about 112 kilowatt hours, uh, which is really modest given how much range you get from that battery. They really did a great job engineering everything for that car. And it's extremely energy efficient, which is a sweet spot for range and weight, realistically, because as you make the car heavier, it affects the range. So you got to add more batteries, which give you more range, but also affect the range. I don't know how Cadillac ended up at 200 kilowatt hours, but good job, guys. That's some phenomenal engineering. BMW iX, Mercedes EQS, and the Audi Q6 all fall in anywhere between 100 to 112 kilowatt hours. Uh, for their capacity. Tesla, as always, is efficient with its 100 kilowatt hour pack. They definitely have a tried and true configuration with their cells, and you can't really complain about the efficiency of their motors. They've done a good job. Okay, so you've got the juice. You know how much energy you can put in the car. How fast can you refill it? That's the next big question you should always be asking yourself when you're looking at an electric vehicle, especially a high-end one like these models. In the world of DC fast charging, Cadillac again flexes with a 350 kilowatt capacity. Yeah, that's pretty insane. But again, you have a pretty insane battery. So it makes sense that they made sure to give you the most and fastest charging capacity they could. Lucid follows closely though at 300 kilowatts, which they mentioned in our interview with Peter that you could pretty much charge um, like 200 miles in 11 minutes. So that's, that's pretty incredible on that 300 kilowatt hours or 300 kilowatts. And then Audi's Q6 can do 270 kilowatts, which is really nice. The Tesla Model X tops out at 250 kilowatts. Mercedes and BMW are just under 200 kilowatts in their charging speeds. So in real world terms, this means less charging time and more time driving. 
right? You're gonna get closer to what you want from a gas station with these levels of charging capacities from at least Cadillac and Lucid. I would say Lucid is gonna give you something closer to um, a gas station pump experience. But honestly, the Audi is really good still at 270. Um, of course, you got Tesla at 250, which you get a lot of positivity on their infrastructure. But fast charging only matters if you can find a charger, right? So let's look at charging network access. And this is where Lucid makes a brilliant move. It ships with Tesla's North American charging standard, the NAC connector, giving you access to the supercharging network that's a huge win for Lucid, and it can still use CCS chargers with an adapter that you can, I don't know if you can buy it on their website yet. I can't remember what we were talking about, but you can find those online. They're, they're not too expensive. I mean, Ford was willing to ship them out to most of their customers, though it was the reverse. They were shipping them so that way their, their members or drivers could charge on the Tesla network and they had CCS ports. Uh, Tesla, of course, has exclusive supercharge access. I mean, that's a gimmick uh, because you know they developed the NAC. Meanwhile, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, and Cadillac all rely on Electrify America and CCS networks, though I think some of these manufacturers are still in talks with Tesla. And I think Mercedes actually has recently been approved. And from my understanding, Audi is supposed to be coming up as well, but I really don't know anything about Cadillac or GM or anything from them on getting on the Tesla network as Tesla does have one of the largest networks in America, um, probably globally. And I would do the research on it if you uh, were interested on it. But they do rely on the Electrify America network. And it's honestly a pretty solid network. I've done videos on it in the past, driving up to Napa and Paso Robos. So and that was in a Q8 e-tron. That was the previous generation to the Q6. But um, regardless, there's plenty of EV chargers around for you. Um, which are improving every day. Literally, there's some going in down the street by the Baron store uh, from our house here in Temecula. But, you know, it's not quite as seamless as Tesla's, where you see those everywhere. And I thought the chargers that were going in at that store were going to be Electrify America. No, they're Tesla's. So not that I'm complaining about that. I was just like, go figure. All right, so let's shift gears to what it's like inside these SUVs. Now, mind you, I haven't been in all of them. I've been in a Model X and I've been in the Lucid Gravity, but um, I haven't been in, I've been in the BMW iX as well. Did a video of that um, uh, two years back, a year back, I don't know, at the Electrify Expo. Um, but yeah, if you were interested in that, um, you might be able to find that video. If not, hey, I'm gonna give you some insight right now. So the Lucid Gravity offers three rows and room for seven, like plenty of room for seven. Like the third row is legit like a freaking couch back there. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing uh, how, how massive that car is, but being so compact still. Like the inside is massive and it's actually it's pretty, pretty well sized. Um, think 112 cubic feet of storage. Uh, the Escalade IQ also seats seven and brings the lounge experience. So you kind of get to just lounge around, but honestly, I, I think probably Lucid had a better experience. Uh, in it, but I, I, it's been a long time since I sat in a regular Escalade. And my experience on those larger Suburbans, that third row was never really all that convenient, but who knows, maybe the Escalade's a little bit better these days, but you, you're supposed to have massive leg room and premium finishes with that Escalade. And especially at the price it comes in at, which we'll get to here in a minute. So the Tesla Model X can be configured for five, six or seven passengers and has the advantage of a deep front truck and a fold flat second and third row. Though I will say Lucid actually has a completely flat trunk that you can sit in. If you rewatch that video with um, Peter, I go and sit in that, in, the, in that, and they have like a little kit you can get that protects the bumper and the paint and everything. So you can just chill out in your trunk, which I thought was cool. It's kind of funny. Uh, Mercedes EQS seats up to seven in luxury, while BMW iX and Audi Q6 are five seaters built for premium comfort not family hauling if you have a big family, though you've still got plenty of room if you're a family of four, which I think most Americans are. I don't think many of us have more than two children anymore, but I don't have any kids. So um, yeah, I, I, there's still room in the back for plenty of stuff if you got your dog or something, of course. 
So uh, luxury EVs aren't just about being practical. They're about performance though. A lot of people look at that and they're like, okay, what, how fast is this thing gonna go, right? So the Tesla Model X Plaid Edition, we're only talking about the Plaid on this one, still wears the crown here with a zero to 60 mile per hour in as little as 2.5 seconds. It's, it's so crazy how fast these cars can go with these little batter, with these electric batteries and everything is, it, it's insane. I mean, you were, you're like top fuel, funny car driving with how fast these things are. Uh, the Lucid Gravity though is no sloth either, expected to hit that mark in under 3.5 seconds. Cadillac's Escalade IQ surprises, trust me, with how big the battery is and how massive the car is, you wouldn't think it could get up and go, but it goes 4.0 seconds despite its size. So, you know, that's pretty impressive. And that's followed by the BMW iX, Audi Q6, and Mercedes EQS 580, all in the mid four second range. So they got that modest, you know, get up and go, which honestly, anything under six seconds is like, it should be illegal. It, it's just so insane. I don't think many people are are ever really prepared by how much it throws you back in the seat when you really gun it. So as mentioned, let's talk price because that's where things get interesting. And the Lucid Gravity is aggressively priced, starting at around $69,000, which is very competitive for what it offers, right? Now you're gonna obviously add features. So I don't think the, the third row is included in that price, I'm pretty sure it's not. But um, you know those types of configurations are gonna increase the price on many of these models. So we're just talking about the base price. The Audi Q6 e-tron starts at around 75,000, the BMW iX at around 87,000, the Tesla Model X currently starts at around 87,000 as well. The Mercedes EQS 580 comes in above $100,000. I did try and see if there was any models really below it. I think I found a couple that were like 96, 98, but after taxes, you're, you're, pretty, gonna, you're, you're pretty much gonna be over $100,000 on that. And then the Escalade IQ, okay, hope you're sitting down for this. If you're not, you know, be prepared for around $130,000 which go figure, you got a 200 kilowatt hour battery, which is like 15 power walls. Like it's, it's seriously freaking insane how massive that, that battery pack is. Um, of course, the more features you add, the quicker these prices can climb, easily past $150,000, fully loaded, you're deep in luxury territory. Now, if you're gonna add all these features, what are some of the fun stuff? And there's a lot of different things that these cars offer. So I'm just gonna kind of cover some of the main things that really stand out for the tech and features of them. Starting with the Lucid Gravity, which comes packed with a Dream Drive Pro for hands-free highway control, right? So you can just chill and let it drive itself. Plus it has advanced air filtration and second row reclining. No, it doesn't have the second row reclining seats. I don't know why I keep writing that in there. I did that in the last script too, um, but it doesn't have, well, I mean, they do kind of go back. So, I mean, the seat does recline back. Um, I think that's where I get, I get confused, but it, it does recline back on the second row, which is really nice. The te Tesla Model X uh, features uh, the iconic Falcon wing doors. Yeah, you've seen them, they're like, like this. They're kind of cool. Um, they actually do really well in tight spots to get out, so you don't have to worry too much. Of course, you have Tesla's autopilot uh, and optional full self-driving, which we're seeing you know, grow in some areas of Texas, right, into some unique shapes. But hey, you know, Tesla likes to have fun and, um, you know, it is what it is. So Mercedes gives you the visually stunning hyperscreen. BMW's iX shines with its futuristic interior materials and curved head up display, which it is really nice. I mean, I liked being in the iQ um, or the iX, I'm sorry. It was really clean in that car. And I like the origami futuristic feel that it had with much of like the knobs. It really did feel nice. Um, the Audi Q6 integrates augmented reality navigation and a virtual cockpit, uh, which is really good. So it actually puts up on the heads up display, like the arrows on the road when you're driving and you use the built-in navigation. Uh, Cadillac's Escalade IQ features GM Super Cruise and um, a wall of LED screens for the digital living room vibe. So, you know, it's the typical kind of Escalade. You remember back in the day when, um, was it 
No, it was, it was Chad Muska. And Chad Muska was all about the Escalade back in the day. If you don't know skateboarding, you, you, know, you won't get that reference. But um, so with all that said, what's next? Well, at Renewable Innovations, we don't just help you understand electric vehicles. Um, we help you build a life around them. So once you've picked the right vehicle for your home and you've made the switch to electrification on your transportation, you'll likely want a level two home charger. I mean, you're not gonna always wanna go to a DC fast charger. You're gonna wanna be able to charge at home or maybe even get a solar and a battery storage system that pairs with your electric vehicle. If you don't have one already, some, some people buy the EV and then they get solar afterwards. Some people get solar and then they get the EV. Whatever you got going on, we're here to help you navigate that space. We can help with that for literally a flat $249 consultation fee. <laughs> consultation fee. We'll do all the homework for you. We analyze your goals, your energy bills, your energy patterns. Um, you know, I have a, a deep conversation with you on what your plans are and understanding your household. I can't just go and live with you and understand your patterns, but you know, that's what your Ecobee thermostat's for. And if you don't have one of those, go down below and maybe I'll have a, a link for you to find one on Amazon. But uh, yeah, matching you to the products and even helping you find a dealership. So whether you're looking to go solar, get that electric vehicle charger, or purchase an electric vehicle in general, I'm here to help you navigate that space because it can be kind of daunting. I've seen people at the charge stations that they bought their e the ID4 and they had zero knowledge of how to charge it and I had to help them. So don't be like them. Spend a little bit of time doing some research. And with the EV tax credit expiring next month and the solar investment tax credit not far behind, it's gone after this year, there's never been a better time to jump on the electric bandwagon. We've been building. We, yeah, we've, we've really been pulling the wagon since Edison lit up the first DC circuit. And yes, we're still team DC. Sorry, Nicola. But uh, we'll be covering even more on electrification from home automation to energy storage to electric vehicles and beyond. So you're going to want to subscribe and schedule a consultation with us if you're in this phase of research and let us help you power your future. Because here are Renewable Innovations helping others navigate change is honestly what we do best. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends and family. We really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.